Everdark, Episode 37, Catching Up. Last on Everdark, Damon and Julian made quite the entrance, with Damon using two more of the vampire bloodline gifts, showing once more that Damon is king. Now we turn to Julian and Christian as they reconnect. The bartender poured two shots of tequila for Julian and Christian. The two best friends grabbed the glasses and tapped them together before downing the alcohol. The liquor ran hotly down Julian's throat and pooled in his stomach. But there was only the faintest sense of euphoria. I swear, I can't get used to the fact that we can drink as much as we like and not really get drunk anymore. Julian said as he set the shot glass down on the bar with a click. I rather like it. While I have drunk alcohol to relax, I mostly enjoy the taste. This will allow me to drink more of it without worrying about the side effects. Christian extended his glass to the bartender to be filled again. The bartender was obliging and topped the shot glass to the rim with the golden buttery liquor. Christian drank it down in one swallow and smacked his lips in satisfaction. That's true. No more hangovers. I'm good with that. Julian tapped his glass, and the bartender filled his as well. He drank it down with relish. He then asked for a beer. A frosty corona was set on the bar. Settled, Julian turned to look over at his best friend critically. He wanted to know if Christian was truly okay with where they were, with what had happened, and what was going next. On the outside, Christian looked well. In fact, he looked better than ever. Christian's skin was completely flawless now. His silver eyes were like liquid mercury that shifted in the light. His hair shimmered under absence low light. He could see more shades of blonde in it. Julian wondered if he looked different in Christian's eyes now, too. How are things going between you and Balthazar? Or, should I say, Balky? <laughs> Julian did not try to hide his grin. Christian grinned back. Never a dull moment with him. Tell me about it. Julian shook his head as his gaze slipped to Damon, who was moving through the mirrors, talking to some, simply touching others, and smiling benevolently at all. I... I told him about David. Julian's gaze snapped back to his best friend. There was a moment of stunned silence. Christian never spoke about David, not even to Julian very often. That time in Christian's life was locked away with his best friend never bringing it out though the weight of it was always with him. The fact that he had told Balthazar meant that he truly trusted the vampire. Wow, I, uh, I wouldn't have expected you to do that. At least, not already, Julian said. Christian pursed his lips. I, I might have overshared. No, that, that's not what I meant. Julian waved one hand frantically. I'm glad you did this. I'm so glad that you felt you could. Christian pursed his lips as he looked down into the empty shot glass. Things are so intense with him that I, I can't always control myself, which scares me. Of course that scared his very private and controlled best friend, but he'd always believed that Christian needed to share more of himself with others, at least others that were trustworthy. David had taken his friend's joy of adventure and trust away. Christian now double-checked everything and tried to anticipate everything, but this confession to Balthazar sounded like Christian had just gone with his feelings. Julian reached over and put one hand over one of Christian's. For what it's worth, I think Balthazar is trustworthy. Oh, I'm sure he is. And the truth is, I don't regret it. When I told him everything, it was like I finally pulled a thorn out of my skin, and now I can heal. Christian smiled. He indicated for the bartender to give him another drink. Not more tequila. A cocktail. Anything citrusy. You got it, my man. The bartender said with a friendly nod. Julian shifted in his seat. I wish I could have given you that closure. But it doesn't matter. I'm just happy that someone did. And I'm actually really happy it was Balthazar. Christian turned his hand over and squeezed Julian's. Without you, I, I think I might have... I might have... not been able to go on after David. You did more for me than anyone else could. I, I think that I was able to tell Balthazar about all this because I was ready to let it go. Julian remembered the dark times after David's death. Christian had been so silent, so remote. He had worried that his very sensitive best friend would hurt himself. That was why, when Christian had finally come back, but leaned heavily on his logical side, Julian hadn't pressed him too much. 
He knew that Christian locking himself off emotionally from people other than Julian and his parents was bad, but it was so much better than the frozen shell he had been. Looking at Balthazar now, the man was playing Damon's wingman as the two of them circled the room, keeping the more eager mirrors at the right distance. He realized that the jaded but rather romantic vampire was the perfect foil to Christian's personality. That's fantastic, Christian, Julian finally said and took a swallow of beer. Christian's cocktail arrived. It was a soft green and slightly cloudy from lime juice. He sipped it and nodded. The bartender grinned. He'd gotten it right. I kissed him, too, Christian said with an almost mischievous smile. Julian blinked and then laughed. <laughs> you kissed Balthazar? I don't know if I believe this. Why not? Color darkened his best friend's cheeks. Uh, because his head is still attached to his body, and I'm certain that it would explode if you actually kissed him. Julian jostled Christian teasingly with his elbow. Christian tipped his chin up. He was rather pleased. <laughs> I'm sure he was. Julian laughed. He was over the moon. What about you? Was it nice? He is a very accomplished kisser. One would expect that after all the centuries of practicing the art. Christian bit his lower lip and actually ducked his head. Julian felt a pang in his chest. This was how his best friend had been before David. He'd wanted love and romance. He'd trusted that such a relationship was possible for him without fearing the risks that opening one's heart brings. Julian almost couldn't believe he was seeing it again. He looked over at Balthazar again. Balthazar had an arm around Charlie's shoulders. He was grinning and must have been telling a pretty darn good story as everyone around him, including Damon, was laughing. He was an extrovert to Christian's introvert. What about you? How are you doing? We went from hunting vampires and wanting to reveal them to the world to now being one of them. Christian lowered his head. Your parents' deaths. They were killed by vampires. You were right all along. I was so incredibly wrong. Julian took a deep breath. I was incredibly wrong too. Just like with humans, there are good and bad vampires. Damon, Balthazar, House Ravenscroft, these mirrors, they're not responsible for my parents' deaths. So I guess I should be saying hashtag not all vampires. You seem lighter. Christian's silver eyes were narrowed slightly as he regarded Julian. I feel lighter. I know I'm not crazy. I know that I wasn't chasing shadows all these years. I was right that people were lying to me, trying to gaslight me all my life. To know that I was correct to trust my instincts, even when the facts were against me. Julian stopped and shook his head. I, I can't tell you how good that feels. I hope. Christian ducked his head, but this time not in boyish love, but with a touch of shame. He cleared his throat. I hope that neither my parents or I ever made you feel crazy, Julian. No, no, you didn't. Julian shook his head fiercely. I always knew that you three had my back. You're my family. It was the others, the police, the medical examiner, the people who just wanted me to stop talking about them, who wanted to sweep my parents' legacy under the rug and act like they were kooks. Christian reached over and touched his back. I'm so sorry, Julian. I I'm sorry it took so long for us to find the truth. It doesn't matter how long it took. We did it. That's all that matters. Julian clenched his jaw and his right hand fisted around his beer. And now I know who the real culprit is. Kamorn? Julian nodded. I suppose a confrontation with him is coming no matter what. He doesn't want Damon to be king. But Damon is king, no matter what he says. Christian gestured around them. The mirrors were all gazing at Damon as if they couldn't quite believe he was real. Their eyes shone. Some of their mouths were parted as they just stared and stared. I've never seen people act that way around someone, unless it was a celebrity. But still, not even then. He, he has this... Magic. I can feel it. You said magic. Julian grinned. Christian blinked and looked alarmed. I, I was using that as an, an adjective. <laughs> no, you were not. You used it as a noun. He threw an arm around Christian's shoulders. You believe in magic. No, no, I don't. Christian's eyes flickered around them as if he feared someone would come take his logical thinker card away. It's okay. I know it's hard to admit. But once you break the seal and open the magical door for the first time, it becomes easier and easier. Julian was grinning so hard his face hurt. Fine. I admit that Damon's gifts truly seem magical. 
but they are not. I, I know that they are science-based, and I will hopefully get him to trust me in time with the way they truly work. Christian said, with a sip of his drink for good measure at the end. I'm sure he will, though he's pretty closed-mouthed right now about himself. Julian admitted with a sigh. He thought of Damon's statement of what he had been before, and telling Julian later. But those statements weren't as concerning as the others about simply taking out Kamon by himself. I just worry that he's underestimating the powers of the modern vampires. He acts like he could take on the whole order alone. His powers are impressive, but I agree with you that, that even he could be overwhelmed by order members. I imagine that this Kamorn is very powerful, far more powerful than any other vampire we've met. Christian murmured with a small frown. It seems to me that the vampires on Earth, rather than in the Everdark, are younger, hence less powerful, while those in the Everdark are older, and not only more experienced with access to more of the Everdark's technology, but with more refined powers, too. Julian was grimacing again. No matter how powerful Kaymorn is, I intend to make him pay for what he did to my parents. We get it. Not everyone wants to have a subscription to keep track of, because you might forget. But there are so many other ways to support us like print-on-demand merch from our shop. We have mugs, t-shirts, hoodies, blankets, journals, posters, and more. And not just for Everdark, but also for Dragon's Reign, Empire of Stars, and more. We do ship internationally, but it can take a while, as you probably already know. Check out the merch at shop.wraithbrain.com or just look in the notes for the link. Christian shot him a concerned look. What does that mean? Are you going to try and kill him? Julian opened up his mouth to say yes, with no regret. But then he thought of the three douchebags in the alleyway. They had been worthy of killing too. They had preyed on the innocent with far less reason than Kaymorn had on his parents. Kaymorn had at least the excuse that he wanted to keep the existence of vampires secret, not to mention deny the existence of Nightvalen. But he hadn't wanted Damon to kill them. His heart had twisted at the idea of cold-blooded murder. When he imagined his parents' killer, he pictured a bowed head before him, but he had never imagined the killing blow. It was one thing if he was defending himself or others against Kaymorn in the moment, but murder? Execution? I don't know, but there has to be justice for what he's done, Julian said finally. I think that Damon would be happy to simply eliminate him, wouldn't he? Christian guessed. If it pleased you. Yes, but if I asked him not to, you would stay his hand as well. Julian then told his best friend about the men in the bar. Christian listened intently to every word. He could almost see his best friend's mind clicking through the possible scenarios that could have happened and comparing them to what did. Finally, he nodded at the end as Julian finished up with the douchebag's fate. I think that you made the right decision, Christian said. They likely won't reoffend now, but... But... Julian wasn't expecting this modifier. But I think if Damon wants to kill Kaymorn, you shouldn't interfere. Christian answered as he drew his finger along the top of his glass. There was a contemplative look on his best friend's face. Really? Why do you say that? Julian's eyebrows bunched. Because it's different when one is deposing an old ruler. Leave him alive and people can still rally around him. Kill him properly and you won't give them a live leader or a dead martyr to follow. Christian answered. Wow. Okay, wow, that's... I can see what you mean and, and why you think this. It's just so ruthless. Julian admitted with a one-shouldered shrug. I'm surprised you would think that way. I don't know that I could go through with it myself, but looking at the situation logically and knowing that we want Damon to win hearts and minds in the end, it makes sense for him to eliminate Kaymorn permanently. Christian raised his head and focused on Julian. His silver eyes shone for a moment like ghost lights. And besides... Anyone who could order your parents' deaths when you had people like Balthazar, who could have simply wiped their minds and directed them onto other things, can't be a good person. You may very well be right. They clinked their drinks together and took long sips. You seem to like this life, Christian said after a moment. There was no hesitation before Julian admitted, I love this life. Even the blood drinking is hot. He tried not to think of his morning after freakout, but he didn't think he would experience that again just reminding himself that they hadn't actually killed anybody and that it was completely consensual helped with that. If it had been forced, though, but that was not Damon's way. He definitely took no pleasure in hurting innocence from what Julian had seen, 
and he was not so crude as to see every situation as requiring force. Only when he'd been weak had he resorted to violence in killing the two fledglings. Christian let out a huff of laughter. Of course, you like the drinking. I find it too messy. Julian shook his head and grinned. And of course, you would feel that way. Christian picked an imaginary piece of lint off of his shirt. So if the blood drinking is hot, I assume the drinking from Damon is hot, correct? Julian did not blush. It was just the heat in the bar and the flow of alcohol down his throat. He's like no one I've ever met. Christian's head tilted to the side. I bet. What do you want between you? What do I... You mean, do I want him as my exclusive lover? Julian tried to make light of it, but he found himself looking over at Damon to see if he was interested in any of the mirrors at that moment. Damon was instead listening to another story from Balthazar. Everyone, except good old Bulky, kept a respectful distance and didn't touch him. Julian felt something loosen in his chest. It loosened even more when he felt a mental caress from the Vampire King. He found himself pushing up in that caress hungrily. Damon's head turned, and their eyes met. Kitten, Damon teased. Just you wait till I start leaving litter all over the bed. Julian teased back. Still happy? Yeah, I'm good. You keep mingling. Christian and I are catching up. Julian assured him. All right, but when you are ready, we will go. No questions asked. Damon went back to the conversation fully, though Julian felt an almost mental hug around him. He smiled and drained his beer. It's really serious between you, Christian breathed. He didn't seem surprised or anything. I'm relieved. I know that you only let him bite you to save me. Julian's eyebrows went up. He hadn't considered that Christian would feel guilty about him becoming a vampire. And I would do it again, no hesitation. But yeah, Damon is great. I I'm just not used to... Well, I can't say that. I need you and your parents. So I guess Damon's being added to my list of necessary people. And Balthazar too, so long as he's a part of yours. Christian slowly nodded. We'll see. Julian, though, knew it was huge progress to even have Christian considering adding Balthazar to his stable of meaningful relationships, so he didn't press. Besides, he had another kettle of fish to open. Speaking of your parents... He paused for effect. Christian's shoulders tensed. The dinner. The dinner. Tomorrow, or, or rather tonight, I guess. The bartender brought Julian another beer. Christian asked for water. He was still nursing his cocktail. What are we going to do about them? Julian asked, watching Christian's expression steadily. Christian frowned. Balthazar has people watching their place, so they're safe for now. Well, I wasn't worried about that. I mean, yes, of course I'm worried about that. I took out two order members who thought killing them was just fine and dandy. Julian's fangs slid out, and he had to take a moment to calm himself before they would retreat. Talking around fangs was not fun. I mean, in the long run. Are we going to tell them about this? About us being vampires? Christian rubbed a thumb over the tattoo of two intertwined rings on his wrist. The mark of the Iras bloodline. Logically, we have to. The lies we'd have to tell would only cause my two very intelligent parents to become suspicious. They'd find out eventually. The lies would only hurt them. So, it's best to just come on out with it. Julian sucked on the top of his beer. He was imagining exactly how that was going to go at Balthazar's. He envisaged them all wearing tuxedos for some reason, seated around a long dining table set with elaborate place settings. There would be candles and a fire going in the fireplace. Dishes would be served, but only Christian's parents would be eating. The rest of them would be just playing with the food on their plates and giving their guests awkward smiles as the conversation dragged. Yeah, we have to do it as fast as possible, Julian agreed. I think my mother will be amused and fascinated by it all. My father will have millions of questions. Christian admitted. Will they want to be vampires too, do you think? Julian asked carefully. He wasn't sure if Christian had gotten that far. His best friend flattened his lips together. I don't even want to speculate, because I selfishly do want them with me for eternity. So do I, Julian admitted. But it would have to be their choice. And then Balthazar would have to agree to make them fledglings, or have someone in the house do it, and... Julian put a comforting hand on Christian's shoulder. I I'm certain that this has happened before. There'll be protocols. It'll work out. Christian's muscles had been stiff beneath his palm. 
but they loosened as Julian talked. He let out a breath. <sighs> I think you're right, but it'll have to be discussed. What has to be discussed? Balthazar asked as he appeared between the two of them. Julian felt Damon simply read his mind, with his permission as to what had passed between him and Christian. The next section of the podcast has been edited out. You are right in what you are thinking, my fletchling. Balthazar will have a solution. I am only sorry that I cannot assist in this. Julian felt that old hurt in Damon, the sense that he was broken somehow, in that he couldn't turn others. He linked their minds together. Am I already not enough for you? He teased. The next section of the podcast has been edited out. I was thinking of the thorns as a gift for you, my fledgling. Oh, that's... Uh, wow, th that's... The next section has been edited out. My parents, Christian said quietly. I need to tell them the truth. I can't lie to them. Balthazar nodded, as if this was not news to him. He already understood Christian's character. I know. I wish things were calmer amongst our kind, as introducing them to our existence at the start of a possible war isn't wonderful, but it is what it is. Christian looked relieved, and he had twisted in his stool to face Balthazar. His hands went to the vampire lord's chest, and Julian didn't think he was aware of doing it. Christian stroked him. That had Balthazar's eyes hooding, but he didn't touch Christian back. Another wise move of understanding on Balthazar's part. Thank you. I, I'm glad you understand. Christian murmured. Yes, and beyond that discussion, we need to prepare a feast for them, Balthazar said, looking rather dreamy at the thought of a party. Y you don't need to do anything too elaborate, Christian said, appearing slightly alarmed. Oh, yes I do. These are your parents. I must make a good impression. They must love House Ravenscroft, Balthazar said, eyes truly shining now. Christian groaned as he looked at Julian. I think I've unleashed a monster. Oh, you definitely have. Julian laughed. We should head back home to plan this evening, Balthazar enthused. Sounds good. Julian agreed, amused that his best friend looked stricken. They finished their drinks, and then the four of them piled into Balthazar's car. Julian was surprised when Damon agreed to it. The Vampire King was cautious as he situated himself in the back seat. He was tense when the car door closed with a snick. Julian held his hand, and that seemed to calm him. The drive back was uneventful. All seemed quiet and calm. It was only when they stepped inside House Ravenscroft that things went sideways. You! A female vampire with dark hair and wild eyes screamed as a claw-like hand extended towards Damon. Elena, cease this at once, Balthazar stepped forward. You are protecting him! Why? Have you betrayed us, Balthazar? Elena cried. Mistress, please stop! Ridley cried. That's Damon, our king. Even if he wasn't, he's beyond your strength. He gave Heath his second death! She twisted out of Riley's grip, even though she looked ghastly and so unwell. He must die, or I will die trying to end him! Join us next time for episode 38, Life and Death. I just wanted to remind you about our audiobooks, which are also in the shop. The audiobooks for Everdark are downloadable MP3s, of the uninterrupted and uncut chapters. As you have experienced, getting the uncut chapters is becoming more and more important as we get further into the story. We've had to make a lot of cuts recently to make it PG-13 for anyone who might find it. Since it's a vampire story, it gets gritty and graphically violent at times, and of course, quite sexy with two vampire couples. Look in the notes for the link to the audiobooks or just join the membership and get access to all the uncut chapters published so far. The Everdark Podcast by X Aratare is performed by Edward Fox, Adam Riley, Jay Thelis, Bruno Devant, Kelly Michaels, and Hannah Hart, with Liz Gentle as Seer, edited by Matthew Prince, continuity by Adriel Wiggins. 
Everdark is produced by Wraith Rain Publishing in association with Her Grace Reed Studios. Copyright 2022 by Wraith Rain Publishing.